Are we still practicing, Gabby, or is this no, it? No, this is it. Oh, this my word, thing. I can't believe it. It's the Big Breakfast here on Channel 4 Live at 7 o'clock in the morning on Monday, September uh, 28, 1992. I'm Chris. And I'm Gabby. Okay, I'm actually, I wish I was Richard. I wish I was you, do. But we're not. We're gonna, we will be in 12 months' time, maybe, if we're lucky. Uh, coming up on today's show, pack, 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 big, big show. Uh, Bob Geldof meets the Australian Prime Minister. And we've got the late uh, Heritage Minister, Brian Gould, with a super, super hint. Paula Yates is uh, chatting to uh, John Lumley in a boudoir. And the Princess of Wales is in Snap, Cackle and Pop. We have the return of the banana splits to British <laughs> television. <laughs> also, tales of true love in Cupid's Arrow. And we've got tons, tons more. We've got competitions as well this Absolutely. morning. Absolutely. But now, come and have a look in the house. Come and have I'll a look wait in out the house. here. Okay, you wait there. Come I will. Leave her out in the cold. This is our lovely house. It's a real house. This is our lovely hall. This is our lovely living room. Hello. Hello. And this is everybody that's going to say good morning to you. And this is our lovely family here from Liverpool. Genuine family. They're real. They're not actors. And they're the Molyneux from Liverpool. Oh, yeah. We're going to meet them later. But now, it's uh, one minute past seven. This is the big breakfast. Time for our first ever news bulletin uh, with Peter Smith. Good morning. These are the headlines. Cut price royalty. The government plans new savings. Labour and the Tories struggle with their Euro splits, and the latest word on Gaza's knee, it was just a twinge. The government is planning to slash the cost of the royal family. Under the plan reported in today's Guardian, the Queen will start paying tax before the next election. And in future, only the Queen, the Duke of Edinburgh, the Queen Mum and Prince Andrew will get paid for official duties. At the moment, 11 royals are on the civil list. Brian Gould has given the Labour leader, John Smith, a big headache as a party conference opens in Blackpool today. Gould has quit the shadow cabinet to lead the campaign against closer ties in Europe. It means divisions in the party are likely to widen, but there is some good news for Labour. A new opinion poll in the Telegraph gives them a five-point lead over the Tories. John Major has his problems over Europe too, with the party divided over what to do about the Maastricht Treaty. He's apparently preparing a back me or sack me speech to rally the troops at his party conference next week. Neil Kinnock has found himself a new job as a radio presenter. He'll be standing in for Jimmy Young for a week on BBC Radio 2. But don't worry about the political balance. He'll be followed by Conservative Lord Archer and Liberal Democrat Charles Kennedy. Two football fans have died after falling from an intercity express train near Huntingdon. Police say they may have been drunk, but the train's doors are also being examined. New safety locks are being fitted to all intercity trains after a recent investigation showed that some could open accidentally. Now sports, Britain's come second to Africa in the World Athletics Cup in Havana, despite some impressive performances on the final day. Colin Jackson took the tally of British golds to four by winning the 110 metres hurdles in just over 13 seconds. Gaza says he's feeling fine after being forced to limp out of his league debut for Lazio. He was flattened by a tackle from behind which left him lying on the ground in agony. But Gaza says his knee is okay. He sort of clipped a nerve and my leg went numb. There's nothing. Formula One champion Nigel Mansell has roared into the record books by becoming the first driver to win nine races in a season. But Mansell's teammate Ricardo Patrese had an amazing escape after a spectacular crash in the Portuguese Grand Prix. Now the weather. If you're driving this morning, watch out for patchy fog, especially in the east. It'll be dull and cloudy over most of the country today with thundery showers, but a few sunny spells in Wales and northern England. It'll remain a bit sticky with temperatures up to 19 centigrade, 65 Fahrenheit. The chances of rain range from zero in Manchester to 60% in Belfast. And finally, a pair of pups have been impressing the neighbours with their unique double act. <laughs> Poppy and Spice haven't quite mastered the classics yet, and despite intensive tuition, their Bach is even worse than their Beethoven. That's the big news, weather and music. Now back to Chris. Hey, Peter Smith, the lovely person. On the big breakfast here on Channel 4, in your face entertainment. Thank you. Uh, the papers today, the papers today, well, they're all led by uh, Gould quitting. Uh, the Guardian says, Gould quits over gag on Europe. It's the one about the Englishman, the German, and the Frenchman. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, okay, got a story in the sun here. Oh, Paula's on the front page of the sun. I don't know how she wangled this on our first day, but we needed the publicity and TV Paula's license dodge charge. 
Telly's new breakfast presenter, Paula Yates, is to appear in court accused of not paying a TV license. Well, I can just say that she's the only one here that doesn't have a TV license. Oh, you got, you got your TV licenses? Yeah! yeah. Let's check that. Yeah, there they are, you see. Proof beyond any doubt that we have our TV licenses and we're all going to club together and buy Paula one as well. Also in the sun today, uh, news that the Prince, uh, Princess Diana won't go has refused an invite to the uh, Page Street Girl of the Year disco. She's turned the invite down. We offered the princess, who once danced the night away with Hollywood hunk John Travolta, the chance to sip champagne at top London nightclub Stringfellows. Who could turn that down? And she could have lived it up in the VIP suite, had her favourite records played, and met the actors from TV's The Bill and EastEnders. <laughs> Irresistible. Girls, would you, you, would you go to a page three party? <laughs> Absolutely not. Boys, would you go to a page three party? <laughs> But you were told to say no, though, weren't you? Yes. They want to go, really. <laughs> uh, what's happening in the Express? I can't remember. Something's happening in the Express. Oh, Neil Kinnock. Former Labour leader Neil Kinnock is to host the Jim Young show on Radio 2 for a week. So he's on the air, but he still hasn't got any. Hey! hey! Mm, sorry. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> macho men so insecure. Seven out of ten single men take up dangerous sports to ease stress. Sports like hang gliding, parachuting, or going out with married women. And uh, finally for now, keep fit videos can damage your health. <laughs> well, that's right, isn't it? Uh, yes. What's this one? Somebody's been reading the football page and not put it back. Okay, so they're going to get fired later. And we always have a fabulous photo of the day. And today's fabulous photo is Brian Gould. There he is. Because you can actually see up his nose there. See that? That's Brian Gould. Fantastic. Uh, now, we'd like you to uh, call us, please, and also fax us, if you want to, throughout the programme, on those stories, or just opinions, or you want to say hello to your mum. And here's the uh, numbers, 081-985-1111 for telephone calls, you can call now, or fax us on 081-985-2222. Thank you very much indeed. We have a local paper here, the East London Advertiser, which announces that aliens land in East London. And those aliens are here. They're actually here. And we'll introduce you to them later. Gabby is with the family. Here's the Molinos. Thank you very much, Chris. Every day and every week here at the Big Breakfast House, we're going to have a family joining us. And this week, for our first family, they're the Molinos from Liverpool. Give us a wave. Right, one by one, here we've got Stephen, Anthony, Steve and Karen. You've got to dig into your breakfast because yeah. um, I'm not going to let you speak now because you've seen our house. Now let's have a look at theirs. <laughs> This is the Molyneux house in Merseyside. Hi, I'm Karen. Steve and I have been married for 15 years. We actually met on a bus on the way to Southport. I'd seen Steve before, a couple of weeks before, going on the, this particular bus to Southport, and I decided I was going to be on that bus. So, basically, I followed him. He does have faults. He always says that he's never wrong, and he, he is sometimes, but... He, he reckons that he isn't. Hi, I'm Steve. I'm married to Karen. I'm a police sergeant in Merseyside Police. Well, Karen is uh, a fabulous wife. She's a good mother to, to our two boys, Stephen and Anthony. She's a lively, uh, happy person. She's not very happy in the mornings, I've got to be honest, when she first gets out of bed. She's quite, uh, she's quite a handful at times. She talks for Great Britain. That's her biggest problem. She never shuts up. That's why I find it so difficult talking, because I never really get the chance. I'm surprised she's actually given me this chance to speak. Hello, I'm Anthony. I'm 12. I go to Days High School, and this is my room. I've got a brother called Stephen, and he's, um, he's all right, really, but what I don't like is he, he thinks because he can leave his room untidy, he can leave everywhere else untidy as well. Hello, my name's Stephen and I'm eight years old and I go to St Andrew's School in McGull. I like animals and I want to be a vet when I grow up. I've got one brother called Anthony. I don't like him very much cause, um, because he always tells me to go out of his room. I think as a family we would be described as an extrovert, fun-loving family. Um, we, we are sort of game for a laugh if you like. I think people think we're a bit crackers, really. Family! <laughs> the Molly knows. I've got one brother called Anthony and I don't like him very much. Uh, got some faxes already. Faxes steaming through. Keep them coming. 0819852222. Faxes. 
11 11, your phone calls. Dear Chris, don't you think I'd be a good Minister of Fun from Alf Garnet? That's, we made that one up actually. That wasn't very funny. Why did we do that one? Sacked. Thanks. Um, and uh, what time are the banana splits on? My kids can't wait for Mrs. Jacobs in five. 7.25, Mrs. Jacobs. And now something else your kids may well like, because at uh, 10 minutes past 7 on Monday morning, it's time now for Dennis. Oh, gross, Ruff. Now I can't finish my cone. Uh-oh, Margaret. Yikes, Margaret, watch out! What? Someone call me? One gallon, milk, 79 cents, one cent, two twenty-nine, one dog, two fifty. You saved me! You're a hero, Dennis. I owe you my life. Hey, it was just a shopping cart. He's a hero. Did you see? Did you? He risked his life for me. Cut it out, Margaret. This is embarrassing. A knight in shining armor. I owe him everything. Boy, what a pain. That's the last time I saved her life. Stop! Stop! Dennis Mitchell coming through! Make way for a hero! Margaret, cut it out! He snatched me from the jaws of death! Let's go, Dennis! <laughs> Saved her dumb old life. She thinks she's gotta pay me back forever and ever. I gotta get rid of her. I wish she'd save my life. Then we'd be even. That's it. She's gotta save my life. Help! Help! I'm being robbed. Reach for it, Mister. Margaret.
Your crummy singing saved me and Ruff. I am? It did? Now we're even. You don't owe me nothing. I'm free! Free! My singing is not crummy. Do, re, mi, fa, so. And that was Dennis and more Dennis, this time every morning and every week on The Big Breakfast. Anthony's digging in to his marmalade here. Not Anthony, Stephen. Stephen, I said your wrong name and you're just still there eating your marmalade. <laughs> Fine, I'll just shut up. Can I have a piece of bread please, Karen? Thank you very much. She has this wonderful way of throwing bread. Thank you. Yes, I'd like that one over there. Now, uh, every time we go to an throw advert break... <laughs> throw it! No, don't. please don't throw the gem. Every time we go to an advert break, we're going to give you a question. But... You don't phone, it's just for fun. Now, everybody's going to say that in a moment. But first of all, the question about the clip is, how does Marco, the serial killer, dispose of his victims? And remember... Don't phone, it's just for fun! Wonderful. This is our Andalusian arsonist, Tonto the Torch. All right. He's really quite safe. They're hanging him Thursday. Eh? And this is Marco, the serial killer. Oh, a serial killer. And this is Marco, the serial killer. A serial killer? Beats his victims to death with a sack of Rice Krispies. 
And yes, the question that I asked before the break was, how does Marco the serial killer dispose of his victims? Well, as you just heard there, he hits them over the head with a cereal packet. And that's from Carry On Columbus, which is released on Friday. And I can't wait, because I'm a Carry On fan. Rather appropriate, really. Uh, now we've got some real phone calls. Chris, laugh more in the last eight minutes than I ever did with TVAM from Matthew Marr in Edinburgh. Thank you, Matthew. Cheer. Uh, Chris, uh, say hello to all the lads at uh, the Royal Mail in Leeds, from John Richards in Leeds. Chris, I've never seen so much insulting garbage in my life. Yes! From Barbara Watkins, North Queensbury. Barbara! We don't care. If you want to win this television, you better find this number very quickly. 0891 33331. 0891 33331, because you can win that in the crunch upstairs with Zig and Zag and the banana splits at about 25 past 7. But now, it's 20 past 7, and time for the Big Breakfast Headlines with Peter. John Smith faces a division in the Labour Party as he opens his first annual conference as party leader. Brian Gould quit the shadow cabinet yesterday to lead the campaign against closer ties in Europe. Meanwhile, Neil Kinnock has found himself a new job as a radio presenter. He'll be standing in for Jimmy Young for a week on Radio 2. The government is planning to slash the cost of the royal family. According to today's Guardian, the Queen will start paying tax, and only she and three other royals will get paid for official duties. Imran Khan, the pin-up Pakistani cricket legend, has announced his formal retirement. Khan told the Daily Telegraph that after 21 years of cricket, he no longer had any ambition left in the game. Now a quick look at the weather. It will be dull and cloudy with some heavy showers in many parts, though there will be glimpses of sun in Wales and northern England. It will remain rather muggy, temperatures between 14 and 19 centigrade, 57 to 65 Fahrenheit. The chances of rain range from zero in Manchester to 60% in Belfast. Well, those are the headlines. Now back to Gabby. Thank you very much, Peter. And more news in, it in 20 minutes' time. Okay, I've got Dad here. We're in the hall together. Nice cosy chat. Steve? How long have you been married for? 15 years. 15 years. And how long have you been a policeman for? 15. 15 years. But you, what are you now? I'm a sergeant. Oh, sergeant. Was it five years? Five years I've been a sergeant. No, but you haven't been a policeman all your life though, have you? What were no, you I was before? a motor mechanic. I worked on Fords. No, that's not the one I want to know about. The other one, other job. I was, uh, I've worked for Bird's Eye on a bean harvesting machine. What really goes into those frozen foods? Or shouldn't yeah. I ask you? <laughs> <laughs> You're also, yeah, no, don't tell me, don't tell me. <laughs> You're also a bit of a DIY fanatic, aren't you? Uh, I can do a bit DIY, yeah. What have you been doing at home recently? The windows, is it? Yeah, I had to put some secondary double glazing on uh, the clever, back bedroom. He's a clever man, isn't he? It was well, taking it off the front and we had new windows fitted in the front and I put the stuff put we take off the front, front and put it put them on the back. back. You clever man, you did a double job there. Well, uh, we've got something we'd like you to do for us. We don't have a doorbell yet on the, the big breakfast front door. This could, be, this could be the end of your electrics, you know? <laughs> Can we just move over here, Rob, if you were... Uh, right, you got ready to, to start drilling away? Is that what you do? Is that well, yeah, I'll, have to, I'll just have to have a look at the instructions first of all, because um, sh I shouldn't be fitting it without looking at the instructions, really. So that's your hot tip for today. Don't that fit anything without looking at the well, instructions. Well, that's right, yeah. should always read the instructions first. All right. Thank you very much for Steve. Thank you for that. We'll leave you to do the bell. You move okay. that side. Okay. I'm going to move this side, because now it's time for Chris and the crunch. <laughs> Yeah, 7.23, here we are in the big breakfast Hello. bathroom with the crunch. Have you read this headline it's today? crunch. Aliens from space landed yeah. and here they are. Here we yeah. are. There's no picture of me in it. I'm sorry about that, Zag. Yeah. Say hello to the viewers, they don't know who you are yet. Hello, viewers! This is Zig. I'm Zig. And this is Zag. Yeah. Okay. I made my own badge this morning as well. You Did can you? do that at home if you like. Okay. Look. That's a great badge, I made Zig. it by my own Where's yours, Zag? I, I, I can't draw oh. in, in, in between the lines yet. Okay, well, I'll make you a bad segue. Will you, Chris? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, I've just got to tell everybody about the Big Breakfast television you can win. Call yep. now on 0839. Double three, double three, double one. Uh, calls cost a, a m maximum no, no, no. of uh, 25p. That's 0891, yeah, right. double three, double three, double one. To win a big breakfast television. Now, what's coming up today? Oh, no we've, got the, we've got oh, the master here, blaster. Hey, master. We've got the master blaster uh, section, this, video yeah, game section. There you go, it's a script. You've got that? Yeah, yeah I was okay. a bit nervous this morning, I'm She's sorry. She's very nervous, yeah, so forget yeah. about that. Yeah. We've also got the banana splits coming up as well. Yeah, I love them! Wow! Which I'm very excited oh, yeah, about. Brilliant. And uh, we have that uh, fantastic competition, whose washing line is it anyway? If you don't know yeah. how to play, What's it's very simple. All you What's have to do... Say? It's me script there. Oh, it says, if you don't know how to play... or. Zig, <laughs> give me back. Okay. If you don't know how to play, all you've got to do is uh, we hang it's up five items of washing on a washing line, which will um, 
wall. That came off the wall. Which will help you identify a very famous person. That came off the wall. Okay, lovely badge. Thanks. Fantastic. I'm open the mouth. Look. Once again, Be zig and zag. This is the crunch. This is the bad thing. Keep your course coming for the competition. Please. What, Zag? The banana splits on. The banana splits on now. La 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 <laughs> and now, here's the banana split. Now, okay, it's time for official banana splits club business. Bingo, as official temporary second banana, please check attendance. Yeah, but we all know who's here, Flea. Why don't I just check off the names of the members who aren't here? Hey, how are you going to do that, Bingo? Well, I'll just say, all the members of the banana splits who aren't here, do not raise your hands. <laughs> I get it, and the members who aren't here won't raise their hands. That's it. Then all Bingo will have to do is count the hands that aren't raised and hold it. Now you guys got me talking silly. Please, just call the roll. Well, okay, if you say so. Here, roll. Come on, roll. Here, roll. Come on, roll. Here, roll. Here, roll, baby. Here, sweet roll. You know something? Here, roll. Someday I'm going to roll these bananas into a basketball and bounce them the heck out of here. <laughs> Hey, Drooper, take out the trash. Splits, you see, every day you're going to get them here on the big breakfast. Right now, though, it's uh, 7.27 and time to play. Whose washing line is it anyway? Once again, we have the Molyneux family from sort of the Merseyside area of the world. Uh, can you say hello to them a bit louder, please? Make them feel very nervous. Make them feel welcome. Look, they're shaking with cold. And uh, all you've got to do is identify the, uh, the pop star or the person. It's a pop star. Actually, I gave it away this morning, didn't I? Uh, by uh, five different clues on the washing line. First of all, though, we need some calls. Who's on line one on the washing line? Hello? 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 Hello, who's that? It's Victoria. Victoria, where are you calling from? Whitefield. Victoria, the first ever caller on the Big Breakfast! <laughs> Whitefield in Manchester? No, Nottingham. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there is a Whitefield in Manchester. Hello, Manchester. Okay, your first clue for the Big Breakfast television is... an overall. An overall, okay? Karen's gonna hang that up. Who do you think it might be then, Victoria? An overall, famous pop star. What do you think? Nothing. Right, said Fred. Right, said Fred. Good guess, but wrong, I'm afraid. So we go to line two. Hello, line two on the washing line. Who's calling? Hello? Hello. Hello, who's that? Diane. Diane, where are you calling from? Eris in Keynes. Hello, Diane. How are you? I'm fine. It's a lovely day today. It's going to be the hottest day in September for years and years and years. Here's your second clue. We've got overalls already. Stephen, go on, hang it up. It's a, it's a lucky, lucky piece of um, stuff. A lucky charm. What do you think the answer is? Overalls, lucky charm. Move along. I don't know. Well, uh, have a guess then. Emma, help me. Cut him. I'll call him my daughter to help me. No, you can't help you. Have your dogs. Mammy's daughter. To help you. Who? My daughter. 
Your daughter? No, your daughter? I'm sorry, I thought you said dogs. No, forget it. Go on to line three. You've got to be quicker. We're on television here. Line three on the washing line. Hello, who's this? Hello? Hello? Who's that? Diane. Diane again? From Bradford. Oh, a different Diane. Two Diane's in one day. Third clue from Steve. It's a loco locomotive. What do you think, then? It's a broken locomotive. It's a broken locomotive. What do you think, Diane? Kylie Minogue. Kylie Minogue! <laughs> You've just won the Big Breakfast Television. The next clue was a red herring which you don't get a clue for at all, and the last one was a koala bear. She gets it! She gets it! Just, we gave away a big breakfast television on the first day. Now, back upstairs. Let's go and see Zig and Zag once again. Back upstairs in the bathroom, because today being Monday is Master Blaster Day. Oh, you've got to be quicker than that. You've got to be quicker than that to chase us. And we're back here. Really oh, hello. Hello. Chris. oh, hi, Chris. We were just talking yeah, about you. It's going you. really, really well. Yeah, we just gave away a television. What? Y you, 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 your head looks like a tennis ball. Orange tennis ball. We were just saying how we good it was going today. That, but Gandhi's very good as well. Gandhi, she's lovely. She's very good. Oh, she's lovely. You're going to be doing it every day. It's Gabby, not Gandhi. And they don't make orange tennis balls. Ah. And your eyes look like ping pong balls. Are you anyway. going to be doing it every day? What? This show. Well, of course we are. We're all doing it every day. Oh, okay. No, but I mean, are you going to so do it? I made this bath for my own sake. He made that bath. In case you weren't up earlier, look, I made it. And I coloured it in and everything. He's my identical he's me, twin see? brother. Yes, I, he's my see? brother. See? Yeah. Well, you like me then? Well, I, I do, but you're not very good at it. Oh. It may be, maybe, 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 maybe next, next week. week. All right, then. Maybe next week. Thanks for your support, guys. Okay. Thanks very much indeed for that. Well, what, oh, wait, 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 okay, we've got to go to our, our no, games no, now. I'm reading. I'm not that Because it's a very special day today. Yeah. Master Blaster. Master, 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 Master Blaster. It's a bit of a video game yeah. thing. Yeah. And uh, today, today. I'm on TV this morning. Oh, look. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, man, the Holyfield thing. At the Evander Holyfield Real Deal Boxing wow. Game. Girl, out on man. Seagull Mega Drive. What is? Girl, it's man. not. He's a boxer. Don't say that's him. Uh, the aim is to defeat contenders from the boxing championship. Let's have a look. I Yeah. It's Chris, I didn't mean what I said earlier. I'm okay. sorry. Are we friends again? Yeah, okay. Chris, it's a cool game because you, 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 you can box the guy and he hits you back and then you... Yeah. And nobody gets hurt, which is a real good and thing And the about noises it. are really cool. No, They're very cool. I don't, know, I don't know. I don't know if I like it that very much. Okay, what do we do? Is that it's a thumbs a up or a thumbs down? actually, because a lot of people get their head bashed in. I okay. like it because it's, it's real... <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so we have a yes from Zig and a no from Zag. And now, this is the big deal, because Street Fighter 2 is now available Street? at your home. What? Everybody queues up all the time to play it in the arcades, but as for no, today... They don't. Yes, they do. do they? Yes, they do. I've Actually. never seen anyone oh, Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Zag, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that and I apologise for that. But to, as from today, it's available in your very own home. Have you got and, any money? Uh, what? Have you got any Can money? Can we some money, please? We want to go to the shop. All right, let me know. Just go to the Street oh, Fighter 2. Okay, well, this Street Fighter 2. Like the first one. time it's ever been seen on British television. Let's is have a look it? at it right now. It is. It's true, yeah? Tell them what I just said when we weren't on. Do you know, it's oh, a secret. Do you, know you can oh, okay. die 150 different ways in that game? Yeah, a very happy game, really, oh, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Are, are we into the vibe? Val! Well, it's a dress caption! Why don't they make happy video games? Well, this is live television, you know! Because oh. it's pretty kung fu and things. Well, if you think uh, Street Fighter 2 is oh. cool, it's now available in your home as from today. Here it is! And later on in the That's week, Val. we're going to give 10 copies of that game away on the crunch. Hey, can I have a go at your camera? <laughs> see my back! Look at my back! The, the way we're going to give it away 
is by giving this address out and asking a competition on Thursday, but not oh, today. And we want some letters as well because we don't know the. All right, let's have the address back in for the letters. Yeah, okay, I if you want to write to us, and pictures, write to I want Zig pictures and, pictures and Zag. Okay, Zig and Zag pictures and mad mail. The madder the better, and the more chance it's got to be read out. And the address is the Big, Big Breakfast, breakfast two, two Lock Keepers Cottages, the Old Ford Lock. London E3 2 N N. And you can come down and visit us any time you want to, you know. That's no, not actually true. You can't. So don't say that, Zig. All right. <laughs> well, who's the lock keeper? Any? Can I see the lock keeper? See me. I've got to go. You want to be the lock keeper? It's uh, 7:35 and Channel 4, Channel 4, all together, Channel 4. And you're watching the big breakfast. Back to you, Gandhi, in the kitchen. Well, I love having a big breakfast, because after a big breakfast, I feel like a new man. I like breakfast, but my wife won't let me have very much. Can I have a big breakfast? You should always have a big breakfast. I think you know what I'm saying. You are not going to get me in that bathroom ever, ever, ever. Anyway, keep your faxes coming in. It says one here from Workshop. It says, Chris and Gabby, well done with breakfast. Here's a toast from John and Kate Coombs. Look, they faxed us a piece of toast. Isn't that nice? And, yes, thank you very much. You're all supposed to be impressed with that. And also say hello to all vegetarians out there from Helen Beach in Ealing. Thank you, Helen. Hello, vegetarians! Hello. Thank you very much. They're quick here, aren't they? It's early this morning. Right, if you want to fax us or phone us, here is a telephone number. All together now, 081 985 Oh, I love being bossy like that. Right, now, here is the question about the clip. What proposition does Robin put to Marion? But remember, don't phone, it's just for fun. Help! Robin, Marion, help! And the question was, what proposition did Robin put to marry him? Oh. And he asked her to marry him. Oh. Oh, isn't that nice? Now, uh, if you could tell us what's coming up in the next 20 minutes, but before you do, I've got yeah. a, fact, a phone call here. Chris, you're talking too fast, I can't understand you. What's coming up in the Who's next 20 from? minutes? Who's that from? That's from Mrs. Baker. Alias Charlie. Brighton. <laughs> All right then, okay, at 7.41 we have Mark Lamar going down your doorstep outside for the first time. <laughs> then after that, so okay. <laughs> Now, what, going, make your bloody mind going, up, for heaven's sake. Now, uh, now, listen, listen, yes, but then we've got uh, a woman who breeds cockroaches in two minutes' time, which is very exciting, and uh, sends them through the post, uh, mail order style. And then uh, we have the latest entertainment news in Snap, Cackle and Pop. Got fast again then, didn't I? It's now 7.41, a little late, but nevertheless, they're here. The Big Breakfast headlines with Peter Smith. John Smith begins his first Labour Party conference lead this morning, and his first task is to heal a threatened rift over European Union. Brian Gould put the party in turmoil yesterday by quitting the shadow cabinet to lead a campaign against closer ties in Europe. John Major has his problems over Europe too. He's apparently preparing a back me or sack me speech to rally his troops at next week's Conservative Party conference. A man's been shot by the IRA in West Belfast just hours after the killing of a 19-year-old Catholic. The first victim, 19-year-old Gerard O'Hara, was shot at home in front of his mother by the loyalist Ulster Freedom Fighters. The government is planning to cut the cost of the royal family. According to The Guardian, only the Queen, the Duke of Edinburgh, the Queen Mum and Prince Andrew will get paid for royal duties and the Queen will start paying tax. A look at the weather now. Dull, cloudy and wet over most of the country today with the odd sunny spell in northern England and Wales. Temperatures up to 19 degrees centigrade, 65 Fahrenheit. The chance of rain ranges from zero in Manchester to 60% in Belfast. We'll have more news in 20 minutes. Now back to Chris and Gabby. Thank you very much, Peter. Okay, faxes are flooding in. Dear Chris and Gabby, could you please say happy anniversary to my grandparents, Doris and Bill, in Swanley. That's from Julian Longley. It's 13 from Greenwich, so happy anniversary. You all right over there? Yay! Don't let us disturb you, will you? Okay, sorry about that. Now, uh, today published uh, somewhere or other in a big magazine. Um, Lisa, which magazine is it? Business 
In Business Age, uh, a list that was embargoed, it was only revealed today, of the 250 richest women in Britain. And the Queen is not the richest woman in Britain. She comes in a paltry tenth with just 100 million. How does she manage? Uh, the richest woman in Britain is Christine Golandry, who is worth 290 million squid. And her occupation is listed as racehorse owner. Imagine going into a job centre saying, can I be a racehorse owner, please? Thank you very much. Uh, of the 227 are unemployed, uh, former cloakroom attendant Cilla Black has made 12 million pounds from embarrassing members of the public and singing. Same thing, isn't it, Cilla? And uh, what else is happening? Q Stark is worth 4.2 million. And uh, the richest woman under 35, which is very important, because we're very interested in her, she's single. And uh, <laughs> Donna Bella Moore's 30, whose fortune is 234.5 million. She's an heiress and also has no occupation, which makes her more attractive because she's got lots of time on her hands to do other things with. Hey! hey! <laughs> but now, for the first time on Breakfast Television, it's time to ask, Where are you, Ma? I'm in uh, Leeds, and there is, sorry, I, was, I didn't know where the queue was then, so I'm all over the place. And the reason we're here is to find the worst traffic jam in Britain, and this is the A, the A58, and uh, what we've done is come here with some people to entertain the people in this traffic jam, which is a particularly bad one. This is Swami Zaku, hello Swami. Hello, um, tell, tell the people what you do, you, you have a good laugh, basically. This morning I'm going to do a laughing meditation with the lucky driver who's coming. He tries to again. cheer people up by having a, a good old giggle, and uh, it does get, if you want to start having a laugh now, and I'll talk to this bloke here. <laughs> hello mate. <laughs> Hello, uh, Mark the Mar, the big breakfast. Do you, do you want to open your other window, just so we can uh, we can get a bit of him? I know this is a bit of a job. <laughs> you might have head into your car. Good morning. <laughs> Sorry, what's your name? John. John. Hello, John. And where, where are you off to? <laughs> work. <laughs> right, do you want to you let Swami in because he'll cheer you up on the way to work? This is basically what we want to do. Just get people who are who have to sit in this morning. Morning. Every morning. And uh, what Swami's doing is, uh, is having a laugh to try and cheer people yeah. up, I think. <laughs> but I imagine it'll get quite irritating. Yeah. I don't want to punch his face in, to be honest. But uh, I'll let it started already. It's infectious. Yes, it is. Go on, have a good old, have a good, have a good let go, basically. <laughs> <laughs> you just picture your worst problem that you've got today. And <laughs> you laugh at it. <laughs> I think you're definitely the worst problem he's got up. So do you mind taking him off to work? No. Oh. Alright, then we'll see you later on. The, uh, the traffic the lights have changed. Is there someone want to give me the card? Where's the card? Uh, if, if anyone knows of a worse traffic jam, obviously not one that's going to be worse because you've got nutters like Swami in there, write to me on the big breakfast, two lock keepers cottages, old Ford lock, London E32NN, which I'm sure you've had all day, that thing. And uh, I'll, I'll speak to you later on. We've got other things going on. Uh, so have a good time, Gabby and Chris, obviously. Nice to see you both. Thank you very much, Marks. Uh, Steve's here, and he's still f trying to fix the doorbell to the door. Steve, the dad from the family. How are you doing, Steve? I'm not too bad. Just got through the wall there. Okay, just got through the wall. Apparently, this doorbell plays 35 tunes once it's fixed, and we can't wait for that. Ooh. It's uh, just gone quarter to eight, and joining me now, and I want to ripple, please, is uh, Virginia Cheeseman. Yeah. That's a lovely ripple, yes. Yeah, a lovely, gentle ripple in the morning. Now, Virginia, why don't you tell everybody what you're here for? Well, I'm here to show you Alf the Hissing Cockroach. Not only that, but uh, as well as showing us Alf the Hissing Cockroach, who is huge for a cockroach, <laughs> and it, you're going to love this over your breakfast, but also, Virginia, you in fact do send these through mail order if people want cockroaches. Yes, yes, uh, I who, do. Do you want a mail order cockroach? Right. No. She'll tell you how much they are. Yeah, how much are they? Oh, they're vast fortune. Three pounds for an adult and 75p for a baby one. What about how much? Do you get a discount if you buy a family? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Do you ever send them out in families? Oh, yes, yeah, people like to and have do, a family. Do they breed? Oh yeah, they breed pretty well. Yes. Okay. And uh, why did you why did you first get in, interested in cockroaches? And are you having us on, or is this genuine? No, this is genuine. I love them. I okay. think they're great. I Hello. really do. I really well, really think they're lovely. one and hear that great crack of the shell underneath yourself. No, I'm not yourself. at all. No, thank you. No. Okay. So when was the first time you came into contact with a cockroach? Was it a blind date? Oh. Or? No, no. Probably when I worked at London Bus Fly House. Okay, because that's, that's where they were. Yeah. So should we reveal Alf to the world? Then? Yes, let's reveal okay, him. Okay. This is Alf. You ready for this? Alf the cockroach, isn't he fantastic? Alf will hiss now. Yeah, let's see if we can get in yeah. here. Oh, he's a bit cold. Go on. Oh, there we are. There you go, that's Alf saying good morning Britain. That's what he's saying to you, good morning. What does Alf eat then? Alf, well, he eats just about anything, but he loves bananas. Just about anybody he eats? No, 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 okay. just about anything. He no, loves bananas. Really nice. He's very nice. Gentle. He, he looks fantastic. Look, I'll stroke him. There you go. I've never stroked a cockroach before in my life, but he's a nice bloke. I like him. He is. He's okay. Very and how long do they live for? Um, several years. Probably about five, five years. Okay. And on, on average, how many orders would you get for a cockroaches every month? 
Not a lot. I have to be honest. Mostly my business is stick insects and tarantulas. Okay. Uh, <laughs> actually, when was the last time you got a cockroach order, Virginia? Yesterday. You did get one. Yeah. Okay. We believe you. We believe you. So, uh, how long? Uh, is, how old is Alpha? Though? He's three inches long. But how old? Well, is he? Alpha's only just become an adult, so he's got about five years to live now. Five he just years? grew. And so he's grew. only like a year or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably about nine months. He probably takes about nine months. And okay. they they give birth to live young, so you get lots All of right. little little ones. Now you. you you say um, three pound for an adult. Yeah. How much if I want to buy Alf? Oh no, you couldn't have Alf. Oh it's come my on. Very special pet. Everything's got a price, Virginia. Oh no no. All right, fifty quid. No no no. Hundred. No no. Five hundred. No. Is this the, the opening the box? Is it? No. Five hundred. No, five hundred quid for for Alf. No no no. Thousand. No. Two thousand. Oh, oh, so we're getting ten oh, cents. We're getting ten cents. Oh, everything's <laughs> got a price, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I'm saying. If you want more information about cockroaches, then. You're mad. Uh, but now it's time for Snap, Cackle and Pop. Round of applause for Virginia. Yay! And also a little laugh. Snap, Cackle and Pop. Showbiz gossip. Today featuring Princess Di. Diana Gate. The story continues. First the squidgy tape, now squidgy the single. It's the royal rave record we've all been waiting for. One CD factory refused to press it, but is it her or not? Decide for yourself. Squidgy's out in two weeks. Always on our minds, but until now, not in the shops, the Pet Shop Boys have finally resolved, quote, publishing difficulties and unleashed performance, the video of last year's tour. And word has it that Pop's own Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid are currently hard at work on a new LP. Hi there, my name's Cliff Richard. I looked up and across the sand... Whose dulcet tones are these? None other than Terry Waite, CBE. Yes, really, Terry's teamed up with his favourite Scottish songstress, Carol Kidd, by agreeing to introduce one of his favourite songs, When I Dream. And this was very early on in captivity, I thought to myself, my... When I came out, I went to uh, Lynham, and there I met my family for the first time. Released next week, all profits go to charity. Hi there, my name's Cliff Richard. My album is called Accessory... Oh, I'll start again. If you thought we had ABBA fever bad in Britain, it's nothing compared to the Swedes. Erasure's ABBA Rescue P has been number one for 15 weeks. Starting a tour this week and very keen to tell us about it, here's Cliff. Whether or not we have genuinely got probably the widest stage that ever has gone on tour. Our stage is 90 foot wide. When the Shads and I went on tour originally, you know, we used to have lighting, but it was either on or off. The tickets pre-sold for this tour really, really fast. The first quarter of a million tickets went in a, in a weekend or a week or something. It's really crazy. They're happy, girls. That's it. And now, before the rest, the official CIN chart compiled by Gallup. At number five, Bob Marley with Iron Lion Zion. Jasmine Archer's not sleeping and shoots to number four. At number three, Undercover's cover of Baker Street. Dr. Alban is banned from the top at number two. And the honour of being Snap, Cackle and Pop's first number one goes to The Shaman.
7.52. Isn't she lovely, Jude? We love her. 7.52, that was Snap, Keckle and Pop. And there'll be more at the same time tomorrow. Hello and good morning to the girls. Hello, girls. Hello. Hello and good morning to the boys. Hello, boys. Hello. This is great. I love this job. Happy birthday to Liam. And uh, will you marry me? Love from Deirdre. Aww. So the question is, Liam, will you marry Deirdre? Why don't you phone us and give us your reply on the air? Uh, dear Chris, hello to Ross Pritchard, and I'll be watching The Big Breakfast till the day I die. Good lad. <laughs> from Alison Robson, uh, Raydham in Kent. Facts here. We want Bob. Where's Bob? Is it true you recorded his stuff last night so he wouldn't have to get out of bed? Come on, you can tell us. Give us a smile, Bob. That's what it says. And uh, Chris, uh, the show's fantastic from North Ealing. If you want to, to send us some more faxes or phone calls, please do. Here is the phone number. It is 081 985 1111. 081 985 1111 and 081 985 for your um, faxes. Okay. Alright, <laughs> Bob. Okay, uh, I've just got back to uh, read the question about the clip now, which is quite difficult, in fact. <laughs> the question about the next clip on The Big Breakfast at 7.54 is What is so special about this golf shop? No, Bit late, but you were there. <laughs> Tony Jackson, four under par. Oh! So the question about, hello, come over here, that's Steve. Well, we've got to do the, qu the answer about the question about the clip, and of course he said it there, it was the first ever televised Holy One. Now you can have a look at Steve again if you like. Pete, hey, that's all right. Steve is uh, still fixing the doorbell. You're I thought you were good best. at this, Steve. I was meant to be good at it, yeah, Chris. We we've only got till Friday. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I'll, I'll definitely have it done by then. Okay. Steve, who's uh, the dad of the family this week, the Molly New family, let's go and meet the mum now. Here she is. This is lovely Karen. Hello, Karen. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Okay. It's uh, three minutes to eight, Monday morning, and Karen is the first ever mum on the first ever family of the week on the first ever big breakfast. So, Karen, whereabouts in uh, Merseyside are you from? It's Magal. 
McGull. Yeah, oh. Aintree. Anyone who knows the Grand National Aintree race course, not far from there. Do you ever go to Aintree? No, I don't, because I don't like horse racing. But it's also <laughs> like, um, like when you live in London, you know, if you live here, you never go to, to see Buckingham Palace well, or, that's you know. That's right, that's, yeah. Yeah, when you visit, you always do it all in a day, don't you? That's you right, know, I've yeah. never been south of the river in London. Do you ever go to Aintree to watch, uh, like, Michael Jackson when he played no. there and all that stuff? No, I would have liked to, but, I mean, tickets are even hard to come by if you live there, so. Okay. And what's happening around uh, your, your area as far as entertainment goes? I mean, what big events do you have in McGill? Oh. It's not exactly the centre really, of the universe, is no, it? No, we sort of go and watch the traffic lights changing and, you know, oh, really? yeah, go down. Well, is that a regular thing? Yeah, right? yeah, and we've got a supermarket with a bacon slicer, you know, And that's brilliant, brilliant as well. Brilliant, big yeah. crowds for that, yeah, big yeah. crowds. Do you have tickets in your supermarkets? Yeah, we do. Because yeah. before it was like big fights at the uh, right, delicatessen yeah. counter, yeah. but now it's the ticket system. That's right. So tell us about your family. Are you happy with the, with the way things are going? Are you happy with the boys? Are they? Brilliant, yeah, it's great. Anthony was a bit nervous about the cockroach before. No, I mean, I don't mean about the programme. I don't mean, oh, right. I mean about your lives in general. Are you oh, happy with yeah. the way the boys are shaping up to life? Yeah, they're good. Any they're, big they're problems? They do tend to fight. Together? Yeah. But yeah. what about with other people? Um, no, they're all right, really. And well, what are their aspirations then? Well, Anthony um, is destined for big things. He he says he wants to go to Cambridge or as he's saying. Is he that, quite yeah. academic then? He is, yeah, yeah. And what about the other one? Stephen wants to be a vet. I uh, don't know how long that will last. That's all right. Yeah. Isn't it? Okay. Too bad. And what about uh, Dad? Yeah. Oh, well, he's he's. <laughs> Dad wants to be good at DIY. <laughs> yeah. Or just fixing a doorbell. That's I do right, for today, yeah, actually, yeah, Kelly. Yeah. So what about the family's politics? Which oh. which, which camp does it lie in? Well, is it split or? I don't know really. Well, I don't really like talking about politics because I don't understand it. But where would you vote if you had to vote? I mean, what do you think of Brian Gill designing and Dave? Hey, hey! <laughs> bit of weird, bit of humour. Too fast for me. Too fast for me. What do you think about David Miller? Resigning? David Miller. David Miller. Sorry. No. David Miller. Do you think Miller. he should have gone? I don't know really. It's, it's you don't care, bit, do you? It's, it's a bit sad, isn't it? You know that he's sort of being judged. Yeah. by the media. Okay, it's always the case though, yeah. and it may happen yeah. to you after this week as well. Well, for a lot of people it's there, but for the grace of God, isn't it? Yes, it's it just is. too bad. Anyway, listen after me. You're watching The Big Breakfast? Yeah, say yeah, it. yeah. Big Breakfast what? On Channel 4. Say? On Channel 4. Right. All right. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Breakfast. Well, I've actually come outside because uh, we see Pete Smith talking about the weather, but because this is a house and we can come outside, this is it. The real weather. It's one of the warmest days forever. Come out here, Chris, because we're going to do the official turning on... Of the milk bottle fountain! Look at that. I can't believe this. If you just step back as well, Liz, floor manager Liz, is going to do the official turning on. Three, two, one, go! Yes, there it is! <laughs> Yay! We're happening now. Wonderful. This is it. It's all going on. Coming up, we've still got to go down your doorstep again with Mark Lamar and Bob Geldorf. We'll be interviewing Paul Keating. OK, Paul Yates is going to chat to Joanna Lumley, but now it's the top of the hour. Top of the hour. It's 8 o'clock, top of the morning to you, and time for the big news with uh, Peter Smith. These are the headlines. Labour and the Tories try to tackle divisions over Europe. The government plans to... Rapidly I will be disowned and marginalised by a decision to speak my mind. John Major has his problems over Europe too. He's apparently preparing a back me or sack me speech to rally the troops at his party conference next week. Matters aren't helped by an opinion poll in the Telegraph today which gives Labour a five-point lead over the Tories. The government's planning measures to cut the cost of the royal family. Under the plan reported in today's Guardian, the Queen will start paying tax before the next election. And in future, only the Queen, the Duke of Edinburgh, the Queen Mum and Prince Andrew will get paid for official duties. At the moment, there are 11 royals on the civil list. It's been a violent night in Belfast. A man's been shot by the IRA only hours after the murder of a young Catholic man in the north of the city. 19-year-old Gerard O'Hara was murdered last night by the loyalist Ulster Freedom Fighters in front of his mum. Around six paratroopers are expected to appear in court in Northern Ireland today, charged with assault. Up to 20 soldiers have been questioned by police investigating allegations that paras went on the rampage in Coal Island after one of their colleagues was badly wounded by an IRA bomb. If having great legs could make you President of the United States, then Dem Democratic challenger Bill Clinton is home and dry. When asked who looks best in jogging shorts, voters plumped two to one for the Democratic challenger. 
Imran Khan, the pin-up Pakistani cricket legend, has announced his formal retirement for the second time. Khan told the Daily Telegraph that after 21 years of cricket, he no longer had any ambition left in the game. Britain has come second to Africa in the World Athletics Cup in Havana, despite some impressive performances on the final day. Colin Jackson took the tally of British goals to four by winning the 110 metres hurdles in just over 13 seconds. The German football manager Franz Beckenbauer has astonished his fans by revealing his belief in reincarnation. The man they call Der Kaiser claims to have been a plant in previous life. Now the weather, if you're driving this morning, watch out for patchy fog, especially in the east. It'll be dull and cloudy over most of the country today, with thundery showers in many places, though there may be sunny spells in Wales and northern England. It'll be muggy with temperatures up to 19 centigrade, 65 Fahrenheit. The chances of rain, zero in Manchester, 10% in Plymouth and Newcastle, 20 in London, 30 in Cardiff and Southampton, 50 in Glasgow, and 60% in Belfast. That's the news. Now back to Chris and Gabby. Thank you very much, Peter. God has given us a lovely day for our first ever show. Gabby, what are you doing? Hey, was that really him? Who, hey, Geldof? Where is he? I haven't seen him yet. Yeah, I it saw was him. him. That was him. Bob, big bad Bob, here now, right now, on Monday morning. So, uh, birthdays today. If you have a birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thanks, gang. <laughs> um, Bridget, but too late now. Bridget Bardot, who is a, a, a fanciable French woman, so we've got some French fancies on the show. What? I don't know why Money. that happened. Um, it's 58. Sorry, Paula. Sorry, I just hit Paula in the head with uh, a French fancy. Um, Sylvia Christelle, whoever she is, is 40 years old. Got no idea who she is. Manuel. 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 Oh, you all know that. Um, Benny King. Dum, tss, dum, do, do, dum, tss, dum. It's not got a birthday today, I just wanted to do that. And Helen, no, he, he has, he's, he's uh, 45 if he's a day. And uh, Helen Shapiro, 46, whose biggest hit was? Walking Back to Happiness. Back to happiness. Well done, that man, Val. Okay, uh, now, that's about it for me. You got any facts this day? Yes, we have actually. There's one here which is very apt. So, second fax this morning from Anne, it says, where is Paula Yates? I can't wait. Ma ma wait. <laughs> she's saying something she can't speak. That's what she's trying to say. And Paula Yates is right over here right now, and I want a round of applause for Paula. <laughs> if only because she's the boss's wife. Uh, <laughs> primarily, of course, because she's Paula Yates. So, Paula, you, uh, you like to keep a low profile, don't yes, you? Yes, I am. In fact, at the, at the moment, I'm keeping a very low profile. I'm the okay. fugitive from okay. the law. Just 13 million readers, that's all. <laughs> she's here. She's here if you want to, don't bother sending out an APB, she's no, here. You can just have me after the show, take me guys. Oh, nothing, oh, no. It's nothing special. <laughs> uh, so uh, what, what are you doing on this show, Paula? Well, today I'm going to be talking to Joanna Lumley. Ooh. Who's upstairs at the moment, Ooh. preparing herself for the in-depth probing I'm going to give her. <laughs> and, uh, and then after that, uh, tomorrow we've got Patrick Swayze. <laughs> We've got gorgeous Cecil Parkinson on Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. And there's people like Peter Gabriel, all kinds of people. Are you going to do Arnold Schwarzenegger? Do yeah. I hear? Fantastic. Yeah. This is it. It's showbiz. It's happening. It's uh, Paula in her boudoir upstairs at about 20 to 9 this morning. But now it's time to say... Where are you, Mark? Where are you, Mark? I'm, uh, I'm still in Rio de Janeiro for people who weren't watching earlier. Not really. Just a little joke there for Monday morning. We're in, we're in Leeds and the reason we're here is to try and find uh, the biggest traffic jam in the country. This is the biggest one in Leeds. This is on the A something and it leads to like, exotic places like Otley and Harrogate and stuff like that. Um, Look, have a look up here, Phil, can I have a look up here? Look how far this stretch is. Apparently, if you took each car in this traffic jam and put them end to end, they would stretch up to about there. So, uh, this is... Uh, oh, I'm really fun this one. This is uh, Roger Quick, who's our accordion player. And what we're going to do is get him in one of the cars. It's a bit miserable here, you know. People have to sit here every day and try and cheer some people up. And she doesn't look very happy. So, maybe, maybe we'll try this one. If you want to get... Have a bit of a tune there, if you could, Roger. That'd be nice. And if you want to try and get around... Hello. She doesn't look very happy at all, does she? Hello, I'm Mark Lamar from The Big Breakfast, you Jill Robert Shaw. Hello, Jill. Do you mind if Roger gets in the car with you? Because oh. uh, it'll cheer you up on the way to work, hopefully. I'm um, cheered up, thank you. Yeah? I don't know if I've not been introduced. It's Roger. <laughs> if you let him in, you'll get to know each other a little bit. Where's he going? Where's he, he's going wherever you're going. He's your little gift for the day for no. Channel 4. No, thank you. No? <laughs> all right, then. Well, we'll try and get someone else. But thanks for your smiley anyway. We need someone who's a bit more miserable. There's one. But he's one of the crew. Oh, this bike's going to be miserable. Look at the state of this car. Hello, mate. Morning. I'm Mark Lamar from The Big Breakfast. Get that window down. You can just push these windows down on knackered old cars. This yeah. is Roger. Will you, will you let Roger in the car? Yeah. 
you have to, uh, yeah, no, no, let him in, open the door, that's how, he's not going to climb through the window, is he, we're from the court in. What's your name? Keith. Keith, and where are you going, Keith? Work. That's right, in fact, Roger, keep playing because you're off now. Right. There you go, take him to her and uh, show him to your mates. Right. No, just say you picked him up over the weekend or something. Um, if you have got a, a bigger traffic jam near you, hold on, I'll do that, thank you very much. If you've got a traffic jam near you which you think is better than this one, and while we've been here actually, quite interestingly, we've found uh, some TV licences and this one says uh, Miss P. Yates. But um, I'm going to flog that one down the market later on. If you have got a bigger, a bigger one near you, not a bigger... TV licence, obviously, because that would be stupid. <laughs> but a bigger, what are they called? Traffic jams. <laughs> then right to the big breakfast, two lock keepers cottages, Old Ford Lock, London, E3, 2NN. See you later. <laughs> Down your doorstep, and he'll just turn up on your doorstep if you ask him to by writing to that address. He's here, the yeah! scoundrel. <laughs> the vagabond. You are not worthy. No, we're not worthy. <laughs> This is Bob Geldof, who is uh, going to be doing the serious part of the show. Yeah, this is rubbish. What? This is so far. This is incredible, is it? Yeah. No substance you, You've lasted an hour and a half and it's goodbye. I know, I think we've peaked. Yep. So uh, wh where have you been, Bob, around the world and who have you interviewed? Everybody, you name it, they beat it. Okay. Well, something to my door like that. Yasser Arafat, like, is that true? Yasser Arafat, Nelson Mandela, God. Really? The Dalai Lama. Did he want to talk to you? I heard he requested a, a meeting with you, wasn't he? Yes, and he does it. Does he? Mm -hmm. We all do it. And, uh, we all do it. Lots of people. Okay, who are we doing today? Um, we're doing, uh, what's it, Rolf Harris. Rolf Harris, okay. Here's Bob's very serious part of the programme today, interviewing that famous world leader, Rolf Harris. Mm -hmm. Last year, the tabloids on both shoulders, the Aussie Raw Prawn. He left school at 15, he's the ex manager of a rock and roll band, and now he's the Australian Prime Minister. The man who touched the Queen, Paul Keating. Were you grandstanding when you sort of, you know, slipped an arm around the Queen? <laughs> no. No, I, I, I don't think, in fact, I even touched the Queen. Mm. But I was trying to guide her through an audience where, to people I thought she knew or would be interesting for her to meet. And, and I, I, sh I should have hoped that the Queen was, and I think the Queen might have been touched by the fact that that uh, her Prime Minister here took that much interest to guide her to the most, you know, interesting people and people she'd known and, and uh, she enjoyed, I thought she had a very, she enjoyed the visit and uh, it was only for the sort of tabloids in Britain that um, I think uh, sort of put a discordant note on the occasion. Do you really, I mean, personally or constitutionally believe that you are her Prime Minister here? Well, this is, uh, I mean, I'm the, she's the head of state, uh, in practical terms as the Governor General of Australia, who at the moment, of course, was a former Labor Minister in the Cabinet I served with through the 1980s, and in practical terms, the Government of Australia uh, is run by the, cap the Cabinet of Australia and its decisions are assented to by the Governor-General, her deputy. But I mean, you personally would like to have a republic. I think it's inevitable that Australia will be a republic, that is true. But before that will happen, Australians will need to know what the style of the constitutional arrangements will be. And there's been no, no debate about this in this country, no debate. Uh, I mean, there's been vague interest in the subject, but really no debate. And before Australians would ever agree to a new structure, they want to know about the structure, whether, whether the president is popularly elected, whether he, as say the French president does, has the right to dismiss prime ministers and governments, or whether we should keep the president a ceremonial person who is appointed by the elected government or elected by the Houses of Parliament. These are all the questions which need to be addressed but never have been. But do you resent the Queen coming here? Well she comes only ir irregularly. But do you resent that? No, I don't think not so. Not personally. No, no you I don't know. It's not resented. No. I think I think I think the Queen has been regarded as uh, entirely conscientious and well liked by Australians. But they do wonder about the relevance of a, a a constitutional arrangement which, which relies upon the Queen of Australia being largely resident on the other side of the 
Why? Well, why don't you have a Queen of Australia that's resident here? Because I don't think Her Majesty wants to live here. No, why don't you elect a Queen of Australia? Well, that's, that's the constitutional point again. Okay. What is this? And the same about the same about the flag. I mean, getting around with the flag of another country in the corner of your well, it's flag. It's not another country. It's your country. No, but the, fl the, the Union Jack is the flag of Britain. It's the flag of Australia with the with the Southern Cross. No, it's the current flag. It's the current flag. You like British people? Well, it's not that long ago when, when the sort of toffs in Britain who ran the civil service and the government regarded this as a colony and... But you were a colony. Pat, pat, yeah, but they pat, no, long after we were a colony, where well, they patronised people here. Well, they're not into patronage here. We'll be on with Paul Keating, the Australia PM, and more from them tomorrow morning. Now, this is the third day of freedom for a woman who thought that she would never see freedom again. She was sentenced to life imprisonment in 1989 for the murder of her husband. But everything changed last Friday when she was released. And Karanja Awalalia, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I know it's uh, your first television show and also you don't have a voice, do you? Please do. Yeah. Right, I'll talk very quietly as well to you. Now, would you mind, we'll talk about the, the present in a moment, would you mind taking us back to the past and the marriage and what you were suffering? My marriage was very unhappiness, very, there were so many unhappiness and uh, violence. And uh, in the end it was getting worse day by day. And uh, I was very depressed, very much depressed. And a build-up of events, yes. you, you then, what did you do to your husband? I tried to talk with him. And uh, I asked him to, to give me five minutes to talk and let's discuss about our future. All the time he came and just beat me, shout me and banging the furniture. And sometimes he up upset my children. And uh, it was getting worse day by day and it was too much in the end for me. Yeah. And, uh, so the, you were then, you then Set set fire to him, didn't you? And you were imprisoned. They said for murder. Yeah, they said murder. Now your your family and friends felt very strongly about this. What did they do? In the beginning, I used to tell my family and uh, my husband family. They all knew about him. He was very violent and he can lost his temper very quick. They, nobody helped me. I tried to get divorced and told my family. They just keep telling me, you know, try hard. Mm. I think it's a cause of our culture. They was under, you know, that... Uh, they say you have to stay married, don't you? I have to you? stay. And every time, if I try to tell my husband I wanted to get divorced, you know, and he, every time he apologized and cry in front of me and put pressure on my family, I won't touch her again, I won't touch her again. And, but, but people knew what he was doing. People knew that, you yeah. know. Knew that. Now, then, then you were imprisoned and, um, for his murder. Um, and then there was a retrial. Yeah. And it's now been, the, it was now manslaughter you were accused with? Yeah. Now, why was this trial so different to the original trial? My original trial was a disaster. You know, I was very depressed and uh, there wasn't uh, enough uh, medical reports. And I couldn't speak. I was still under a you know, very depressed state. Mm. And uh, there wasn't enough uh, evidences. Even my family, you know, they wanted to go for uh, evidence. You know. My sister said they don't need uh, any. So then they retried and, and it's now man's daughter. And you were actually released on Friday. So you've, yeah. you were over three years in prison, over weren't you? Over three years, four months. I spent in prison. Well, we won't talk about the time you spent in prison, but the time. what have you done since you've been released? Um, Apart from, you know, lots of people, you know, they are coming to see me and they are so happy. They are, they got tears in their eyes, you know, because they, they are so happy for me, for my children, for my family. And my telephone, my sister telephone is 24 hours on. <laughs> and so many people, they don't know my sister's telephone number and address. I'm getting lots of flowers and drink, oh, it's wine. It's, uh, you know, what, what advice would you give to women who are suffering the same way that you suffered? The most important thing I wanted to tell them, don't suffer in their house, don't feel shame or embarrassed for anything, and they deserve happiness. They should go for to the police and our advice center so they can get help right. and support. 
Well, thank you very much, and thank you so much for joining us for being our first guest on The Big Breakfast. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Chris. 17 minutes past eight, you're watching The Big Breakfast right here on Channel 4. Time for another question about the clip now. The question about this clip, and I hope you're ready for your bit on this bit, yeah. thank you very much, is what happens to the lieutenant's helmet? But remember... Don't phone, it's just for fun! They did it. Bravo, Wissimo! Well, let's make a start, eh? Up and over to glory. Last one in Berlin's a rotten egg. <laughs> Give me your helmet, lieutenant. Helmet, Lieutenant. <laughs> yes, some sort of clever hat camouflage might be in order. <laughs> So the answer was, uh, it was shot at the uh, lieutenant's helmet. Blackadder 4, available on video next week. Uh, now, though, let's go right over to the Big Breakfast headlines once again with Peter Smith. The government is to cut the money given to the royal family and make the Queen pay income tax. Today's Guardian says the economy measures will be introduced before the next election. The Queen, the Duke of Edinburgh, the Queen Mum and Prince Andrew will be the only royals to be paid by the state. Brian Gould has cast a shadow over the Labour conference in Blackpool by quitting the shadow cabinet so he can attack the party's European policy. This morning he claimed between six and eight other members of the shadow cabinet backed his views. The Tories are divided over Europe as well. John Major is expected to deliver a tough rallying speech at next week's Conservative Party conference. An airliner with a burst tyre has made an emergency landing at Luton Airport this morning. There are no reports of any casualties among the 123 passengers aboard the plane. 
Quick look at the weather. Watch out for fog in the east. It'll be cloudy over most of the country with thundery showers and a few sunny spells. Temperatures will be between 14 and 19 degrees centigrade, 57 to 65 Fahrenheit. The chance of rain ranges from zero in Manchester to 60% in Belfast. That's it. Now back to Chris and Gabby. Thanks, Peter. Thanks very much indeed. Well, here I am with Stephen and Anthony from the uh, yeah. Molyneux family from uh, McGull. And you've got a fax for us to read out here. Yep. Dear Big Breakfast, welcome and good luck. You'll need it. Love, TVN. <laughs> Again, and you've got one for us as well, Steve. First call from Isle of Man. Best wish it is Alex Cowley. Okay, we've got our first fax from the Isle of Man. Yeah. You can fax us. If you can hear us or see us, you can fax us or phone us. Oh, that sounded quite nice, didn't it? Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, now, where are they doing? Uh, in the traffic jam, because it's time once again to say, Where are you, Mark? Oh, well, I'm on the A58, which goes that way to Weatherby, that way to Leeds, and that's it, because it only goes two ways. And this is one of the worst traffic jams in the country, apparently. Um, what we're trying to do is find the worst traffic jam, and so later on I'll be giving you an address, address to write to. Not you two, I mean everyone else watching at home. And I've brought along some entertainment. If you could have a little sing-along there, Trish. Earlier on you saw Swami Zaka, the bloke who laughs his head off because he's a bit mad. And uh, Roger Quick, who's from Leeds, but plays Scottish stuff on the accordion. And this is Trish King. Where else but Leeds could you find a diva called Trish King? They're normally like Giovanni Scarlatti or something. All right, Trish? Hi. All right, uh, what we're going to do is try and get you into one of the cars, not for... Uh, not for any personal reasons, you know, just to cheer people out on the way to work. So if you can sing a bit, right. and we'll try and find someone interesting. But unfortunately, the traffic's moving just as we get to it. But if you could have a, have, have a little sing while we're going, because it'll cheer me up as well. Do you know any Sham 69? All right. We're never going to find anyone now. Sorry about this. Maybe we should just stop the traffic anyway, because they're going to have to stop. Let's try this one. No, that was no good. No, you carry on, because that's, that's a full car. This one will do. Can we get up here? Come on, Phil. Oh, blimey. <laughs> We're not going to get anyone. Oh, here's one. Here's one. Hello. Hello, I'm Mark Lamar from The Big Breakfast, you Hello. You're hello, right? Fair enough. <laughs> and do you have to come this way every day? Because it's a murderous traffic jam, isn't Every it? morning, have it to go this way and come back is, this way. Is, we brought Trish, uh, who's a, an opera singer. If she could get in the car, she'll cheer you up on the way to work, which, <laughs> which would be quite nice. I know you get this sort of thing every day around here, because uh, that happens in Leeds. Are you quite happy about this? Do you like opera? I do actually. Yeah. Do request? Have you got any? Of What's your favourite song? I like something from Aida. That's my favourite song. Can you do anything from Aida? No. no. She only knows the one song, Carmen. unfortunately. She doesn't get a lot of work. That's why she's here at traffic jams. She can't get onto the actual stage because she only knows the one song, and she has to bring the lyrics to it as well. Well, well, uh, well you. you drive off, you go on your way to work there and have a nice time with Trish today. You're going to hear that song a hell of a lot. Um, so if anyone knows of a worse traffic jam, uh, w right to this address, The Big Breakfast, Two Lock Keepers Cottages, Old Ford Lock, London, E3, 2NN. And uh, I hope you've had a good day because I haven't seen much of the programme, but I'm sure you two, you're such lovely people, I bet you've done a really good job. Bye. Oh, he's only a nice boy, Mark. More from Mark later on. Now, uh, coming up later, um, Paula will be talking to Joanna Lumley upstairs. Well, I think she's upstairs somewhere. And uh, just now, we've got a super, super hit from the ex-Shadow Minister for Fun, Brian Gould. Super Hits, your indispensable guide to a better life. I'm Brian Gould. I'm a Labour Member of Parliament. I have been in the past a lawyer, a law don, a diplomat, and a television journalist. But I'm currently Labour Member of Parliament for Dagenham. And today's super hint is? My handy hint is that striking a match and letting it burn down is a very good way of dispelling unpleasant smells, particularly in a confined space. Coming soon on Super Hints. I'm Lady Waldington, and my hint is about having a happier honeymoon. What a super, super hint that was. Uh, right, what time is it? It's 8.26, and coming up, we've got Guess the Mess, your chance to win wonderful CDs. Now, I've got a question about the clip. Watch the clues and try to work out the title of a well-known film from this mess. Do phone. This isn't just for fun.
I got that totally wrong. It's your chance to guess the mess. I forgot to give you the telephone number, even though I told you to call. Here's the telephone number. It's 0891-33311. That's 0891-33311. And remember that calls should cost no more than 25 pence. And that is the number to call for your chance to win Guess the Mess. And that will be coming up later. But now on the Big, big Breakfast, it's time for People's Report. I'm Dr. Dunlop and the Director of Public Health for the Hull Health Authority. I think more people should use hard toilet paper. Currently, Britain is facing an epidemic of Shigella Sony dysentery. In 1992, there have been over 12,000 cases in England, compared with only 3,000 odd cases over the same period in 1991. I think a considerable number of these cases could have been prevented if people had used hard loo paper instead of soft loo paper. Modern soft loo papers allow far too many organisms to contaminate the wiping hand. For more than 10 years now, I appear to have been a lone voice advocating this use of hard loo paper. I believe the time has come to act. Well, the only way to find out what the great British public prefers is to ask them. Well, we always use the soft um, form. I don't like the hard. It's crinkly. It's more absorbent. I get wet hands with hard. I thought it was more effective in its cleaning process. I don't think that it's possible to get the public to go back to using hard loo paper. What I think is really required is a combination of both hard and soft loo paper. So it's hard on one side and soft on the other. I advise people when they come to my house then, to use the toilet that they should take a sheet of each toilet paper and use them both together like that. Have you tested it on the general public? No. I made up a sample here which has got the soft loo paper on one side and got the hard non-porous on the other side because I think that will protect the wiping hand. Do you think there'd be a market for this if the paper manufacturers produced this type of toilet paper? Uh, no, if you give it a, let me have a try, I'll tell you. Alright, there we are, if you have a trial then. Yes. Thank you. Well, what's the verdict, Gavin? Well, I think uh, you've got a good product there, actually. It's, um, it's fairly soft and you can protect your hands with it. So that's the um, layer on the back. What's the verdict? What did you think of it? A lot softer and um, your fingers don't go for it. Right. What did you think? The same? It's quite soft, but it's a bit like sandpaper. <laughs> it's okay. All right. It's better mm -hmm. paper. <laughs> like newspaper? Yeah. Oh, well. Thanks a lot. Now, remember all three of you to go and wash your hands thoroughly. But I think that conclusively proves there is a demand for this type of toilet paper. I'm off to see some toilet paper manufacturers. You are about the only manufacturer left of this, what I call, firm toilet paper. What percentage of the market do you still have? We have uh, quite a small share of the UK market, something like 1%. I think uh, ISIL medicated toilet papers in something like a quarter of a million homes in the UK. Mr. Berman, this is what uh, I would like to see manufacturers make, where the, you have a sheet of soft toilet paper on one side and a sheet of firm, non-porous paper on the other side, hopefully also medicated with some form of germicide. Is that technically possible to manufacture? I'm sure there's a market there for it. I agree with you. I think there's definitely a market there for that type of product, but uh, at the moment I think it's beyond current technology available to us. Um, so I'm not sure that we can be able to see this type of product on the shelves you know, in the very near future. Well, would you like to get your backroom boys do some work to see whether or not technically it would be possible? Jay's is all about household hygiene, disinfection. You know, we'll certainly take that up. So what have you learned from today? Well, as we know, dysentery is preventable. And I'm delighted to say the one thing I've learned today is that hard blue paper is available. People should lobby the local shopkeepers and if they still want to supply it, they should then get on to Jay's and they will find the name of the nearest stockist. And I also hope that Jay's will take my idea on board of having a new type of loo paper which is soft on one side and hard on the other. The issues that matter to the people. Yes, the people report. 8.33, you're watching The Big Breakfast on Channel 4. And now it's time for the first ever Guess the Mess. Uh, uh, here's the mess we asked you to guess. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I know the answer, and I still don't know how you get it from that, but somewhere in there is hidden a, the name of a film title. And uh, we should have somebody on the, on the line now to play this. Hello, line one. Hello. Hello, it's Gay from Norfolk. Hello, Gay. How are you? I'm fine. Are you enjoying the show? Yes, yeah, good fun. Can you see me now? Yes. Yeah. Can you see me doing this? I can't hear you, but I can see you. Can you see me doing this? Yes. Yeah. Can you see me doing this? Yeah. Good. Okay, so what, what do you... Th I've just eaten a banana, actually. So, uh, sorry, I'm not, I'm not ill. Uh, yeah. a banana. Uh, so what do you think the answer is then, Gay? Lethal Weapon 2? <laughs> no. You're wrong. Uh -oh. Okay, so one CD for her, two CDs for line two. Line two, hello. Hello, line two. Oh, is anybody there? Hello? Hello, line two. Yeah, pity pity. Hello, line two. Yes, hello, who is it? Uh, yes? Warren. Warren, hello. Where are you from? Winchester. Winchester. Okay, this is Winchester. Right, well, how is Winchester today? Uh, it's raining. Is it really? Yeah. Good. <laughs> and uh, what do you think the answer is then, Warren? Uh, Fatal attraction. Fatal attraction, no, no, that's fine. Okay, have we got another call? Hello? Is anybody else there on line three? Hello? Hello, yes, hi. Neil Durham from North Berwick, Scotland. Okay, nice to see you in Scotland. How's Scotland today? Very, very misty. Okay, are you, uh, what, when are you going out to work? Are you about to leave for work or are you working today or what? No, oh, I work on an oil tanker, so I'm on leave at the moment. An oil tanker? And how long are you home for? About three months. Okay, well, this is the way to start your time off with the show. Enjoying the show? Yeah, not bad. Good, it's better than TVM. Uh, Say yes! Yeah. Say yes! Yes! Say okay! Okay! No. No, alright then. Okay, what do you think the answer is then? Lethal weapon. Yeah, but which one? We've had two, it's not two. Uh, three. Yes it is! <laughs> Lethal weapon three! That was guest the best today. So you win three fantastic CDs to take back onto your, um, onto your tanker with you. Thank you very much for playing and you've won. Lovely, thanks very okay, much. Cheerio. Uh, now, it's uh, 8.35. Time moves on, uh, on the big breakfast, uh, because that's what you're watching on Channel 4. That's a enormous! Huge! Good morning everyone, make sure yours is big. Back in the kitchen with Stephen and Anthony and uh, they're going to show me how to make jam tarts because I hear you're a bit of a jam tart genius. Is that true? Yeah. Alright then, what do we do? Well first, um, yeah, sprinkle some flour on the work surface. Yeah. Then you sprinkle some flour on the rolling pin. Right. And if you don't have a rolling pin, a good tip is to use a milk bottle. Use a milk bottle if you don't milk bottle if you don't have a rolling pin. <laughs> you all try and say that. It's very difficult. Right, and then you cut the and then, pastry out. And then you cut the pastry out with um, a pastry cutter. And if you don't have a pastry cutter, you can get a, a glass and turn it upside down, and and then you can use the glass to cut it out. Hey, two hot tips for me. That's wonderful. And how about the, the jam? Once you've taken this out, what do you do with that? Well, um, unfortunately, we haven't got any... <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. Any cake this tins. bit I haven't been told. What's this? Unfortunately, we haven't got any cake tins. We haven't got so any cake tins. So make it into a cup shape. All right, you make it into a cup shape. Actually, Anthony, um, What's your mum's cooking like? She's what? Don't say a word, Karen. <laughs> What's her cooking like? She's a good cook, apart from um, when she cooks roast dinners. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what's wrong with her roast dinners? Well, mainly you don't like them. You don't like them? Well, no. what's your favourite meal then? Um, <laughs> jam tarts. <laughs> no? <laughs> Anything no? Mum doesn't make. Anything mum doesn't make, yeah. <laughs> Anything mum doesn't make? <laughs> Them as well. I'm just going to open up the oven because I'm. Um, here's some we've morning. prepared earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Jam tarts, everyone. There we go. Liz, if you'd like to hand them around. No, excuse me. Hand them around to everybody. No, yes, go on. You do it. Thank you very much. Okay, you carry on doing that, making your cup shapes and uh, going into a break now. So here is the question about the clip. Why can't Jennifer Saunders get away with not drinking? On holiday, the jam for you. How can you make jam tarts without the jam? And remember, don't phone. It's just for fun. <laughs> Madame, Wazelle, Madame Wazelle. Oh, I'm having a really healthy week this week. Perhaps I'm not eating and I'm not drinking. Right. The fruit, obviously, just eating fruit. Just eating fruit and not drinking. But you can't go to France and not drink.
So I'm not eating and I'm not drinking. Right. The fruit, obviously, just eating fruit. Just eating fruit and not drinking. But we can't go to France and not drink. Hmm? The Chateau, we're staying out in the middle of a vineyard. The air alone, it's 15% proof. Oh, no. <laughs> I think just why. So the question about that clip was, why can Jennifer Saunders get away with not drinking on holiday? Because the air alone is 15% proof, said Joanna Lovely. And that uh, is a clip from Absolutely Fabulous, which is the new BBC comedy show. Starts on BBC One in November. A uh, call from Emma Malone. Please read out her birthday wish to her mum, because she's got to go to school in 10 minutes. Sorry, haven't got time, Emma. Uh, right, it's time for the big breakfast headlines, the final ones of the day. It's uh, 8.41, rather. Peter Smith. Brian Gould, who quit the Shadow Cabinet because he's against closer ties with Europe, today claimed at least six other members of the Shadow Cabinet agree with him. As the Labour conference opens in Blackpool, party leader John Smith is putting a brave face on the damage caused by Mr Gould's resignation. The government plans to cut the cost of the royal family. The Guardian says the Queen will start paying tax before the next election. And in future, only the Queen, the Duke of Edinburgh, the Queen Mum and Prince Andrew will get paid for official duties. The weather, dull, cloudy and wet over most of the country today with the odd sunny spell in northern England and Wales. Temperatures up to 19 degrees centigrade, 65 Fahrenheit. The chance of rain cha r ranges from zero in Manchester to 60% in Belfast. And do watch out for fog. We're getting reports of a 40-car pile-up on the M18 in Yorkshire. Now a couple of stories happening later today. Princess Diana is visiting a day centre for the homeless. And watch out for more fireworks over Europe at the Labour Party conference. That's all the Big Breakfast news and weather for today. Now back to Chris. Oh, hey! Hey, hey! Peter's just telling us that it's a lovely day for the Labour Party conference in Blackpool, and uh, happy Blackpool to you Labour people. Now, Steve's here, Steve Molyneux from uh, the Family of the Week, and he's fixed his doorbell. It yeah? should work, Chris. Okay. It should it, work. Okay. So, uh, well, how, which tune have we got in, the, in well, there? Well, it's the... 250th anniversary of the national anthem today, so okay. we'll set it for God Save the Queen. Okay, just 25 different tunes, let's see if it works. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good, isn't it? And if you keep your finger on it, it plays the whole thing. Now let's go upstairs because it's the first time again ever that we go to. All right there, Peter. Paula's boudoir. Here she is. This is a boudoir, and she's with Joanna Lovely, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Finally, you get to see it, the wonderful, sweeping panorama of my boudoir, and I'm here on the bed with one of Britain's most popular and accomplished actresses, Joanna Lumley. Paula. It's completely it's so wonderful to be here with you. It's <laughs> fabulous. It's such a pretty little room. Now, I, I hear from yeah. the news this morning that not only am I about to be arrested, but that you are one of the 20th richest women in Britain. Yes, well actually this was a lie because I haven't seen the list but I did hear that there's a list out today with some of the richest people in Britain on it and I just wondered if you were and I told you I was to make you feel happier but um, I'm, I'm quite shocked but I, actually I shouldn't be that you're so enormously rich because you're working so much aren't you? Now what are you doing at the moment? You're doing a play. I'm doing a play. It's not just kind of enormously rich play but it's uh, um, in, as far as paying goes but it's, it's extraordinarily well written by a brilliant, brilliant writer called Bernard Copps. So it's rather, um, it's, it's what they would call in our industry a challenge, you know, it's really good, it's, it's strange and deep and quite funny and quite black and quite weird. Now is it true it's about a woman's fantasies? No, not really, no, it's, a, it's about, um, it's just about two people who are sort of trying to make, make their rather shambolic lives work and the, and the woman is like me, an actress, but with any luck, like, not like me, sort of lost her nerve and completely out of work and rather past it and rather shot and having a pretty sort of tragic time really, but managing, managing. Mm. So it's quite sort of, it's quite odd, you sort of drift in and out of reality. It's not really about our fantasies, no, not really. Well, it should be, because <laughs> that was my next question, so I'm very irritated oh, it's not about no. her. Well, ask me your next question and I'll work it in. Now, do you think that it's true that some women have a sort of midlife crisis, the same way that men do? Yes, I wonder, I think that a lot of people have, have a kind of a crisis in their lives, but it isn't always necessarily at a certain time. Probably, I suspect, men might have it when they're in their middle or late thirties, funnily enough. And I think that um, all sorts of things in your life can trigger this off. And I think it could be much later than this, and it could be earlier than this. Quite a lot of people going, leaving home for the first time and going to college or school or starting work, quite often young people find a sort of weird black crisis comes up in their life and they feel very depressed. And 
sort of gloomy about things. Now, do you worry about sort of keeping fit and things like that? Do you feel no, that you Paul, have to I extra don't. Effort no, don't. Do you? No, no, no I don't no, no, at no. all. No. Do you still go I to the Himalayas? Well, when I can, I adore travelling. This year, I've been lucky enough to get out to Syria to write a piece out there and um, you know always always there are plans and hopes in the future maybe to get to Bhutan maybe to get to Tibet or to learn more about Tibet or to get up to that no that sort of region, region of northern India where I was born. And you don't worry when it's very very primitive like that? It doesn't worry me, no, does it you? I don't yes. mind about that. I it does you. I, d I don't like where there's no English toilets, it bothers me <laughs> enormously. <laughs> you don't like squatting behind a rock, no. Well, no, I don't mind that. <laughs> doesn't worry me a bit. No. Now, you're about to start again working on your comedy show. Yes. Is that fun to do? Yes, it's lovely. It's the, ve the best fun in the world. Jennifer Saunders, funny woman, told me to say that. Um, <laughs> it's a very funny show. I just think people are just going to fall off their chairs laughing. We laughed a lot, so that's good. And so it's very nice that we've been asked to do it again. Do you think that, that people think that you really will be all jolly ho hockey sticks? Or do you think that they still imagine you're going to kick into the room like Purdy and land them a blow in the groin. You can't really blame people for expecting you to be what they last saw you on television as, if you know what I mean, because television creeps in and if they see you doing something, they imagine that's what you're going to do next. And if you're not that, then they go, oh, we thought you'd be this. But that, that doesn't really matter. I mean, this part isn't, isn't like any of those people. She's, um, she's, uh, she's very nice, right? Is she? Oh. Now, we'll be coming back to you in a second, but right now, yeah. every day, if you tune in, you're going to be able to find out about a true life romance, the ups, the downs, the passions, everything about it. And today on Cupid's Arrow, we have the true story of Simon and Lura. Love is a many splendid thing. I was in school in Colorado College, and a friend of mine who's English, who was going to school over there as well, um, Catherine, uh, showed me some holiday photos of hers. And I was flipping through these photos, and there happened to be this man, who turned out to be Simon, and I just saw this picture and I said, oh my God, I can marry this man, as a joke, because he was so beautiful. I ended up, rather than approach Kathy straight away for the address, I sort of sneaked into her bag, got the address from her file effects while she wasn't actually looking, um, scribbled it down and decided to write to Laura. So out of the blue, this letter arrived and I just thought, I'm going to kill her because she's told him. Lo and behold, one morning, it, the letter just plopped onto my doormat and it was an email letter from her. And when I read it, I was very impressed. So for about two years, Simon and I wrote to each other, and um, we, we did meet. When you're writing, it's much easier to put all your dreams and your feelings down on paper. And so we really got to know each other through our letters very well. So as we continued writing, there, we just I got this feeling out of his letters that this was a very special person and that I could, if we met, I could really uh, spend the rest of my life with this person. Well, through the letters, we... I've, I fell in love with this woman and um, I got to the point where it just one day it dawned on me that this woman is perfect and that I really wanted to marry her but it was almost like a pipe dream because I thought it's, it's not gonna happen. It was in May of 1990 and uh, he finally wrote and said I've got a ticket and I'm coming out. I really wasn't sure how we'd get on and how, how it would all work out but really the first first time I saw her, I was just, I set eyes on her and I was just like, oh, yes, this is the woman, oh, she's great. We sort of had to be a bit realistic about the relationship because he was on a note in England and I was in the States and so we just sort of left it as being a wonderful thing and see what happened. She applied for some, for a visa to come over and work here um, and about, well it was about six months later that it all came together and she finally came over to England. I was able to get a six month work permit and uh, which would enable us to spend time together in England and um, and it was very nerve wracking and I got over here and and we just got on better and better as time went on and uh, and at the end of the year I had to go home because I couldn't afford to stay here anymore. So I, I decided the logical thing was to go out and spend a month or whatever, whatever time I could out there with her and her family at Christmas. 
And on New Year's Eve, he, he asked me to marry him. <laughs> and I said yes without even thinking. We came back together, and no one could believe it when we stepped off the plane and then announced that we were getting married. Uh, the marriage took place about a month later on, and we haven't been apart since. Even though Simon and I have only known each other for a relatively short period of time, I really feel like I've known him for a lot longer because of the letters, and, and uh, it's hard to remember not knowing him. I still can't believe how we met, and she's the sweetest wife that I could ever want. We're perfect together. We have the same dreams, the same goals, and it's brilliant. Yes, Sweet, wasn't it? It's lovely. Ah, now, nice. are you, what sort of qualities do you look for in a man? I think romantic is lovely. I think that's sensational. But I think I'd look for, I think I'd look for um, uh, honesty, and good humour, and a lot of nice things like that. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what we wanted. What did you want? I wanted you to say a scoundrel and a cat. Now. <laughs> If you want to um, send us your true romance so that you can be on the show, you should write into the Big Breakfast to Lock Keepers Cottages, Old Ford Lock, London E32NN. But now, thank you so much, Joanna, for being my first guest. It was completely thrilling. It's been lovely. It's been, been absolutely wonderful. And before we go, I have one question because you're not to ring up. This is just for fun. Who is the Max in the question? In question. I don't know what to do. Max? to do. Max? Right, the answer to the question is the Max in that clip was Patrick Swayze, who is going to be here in the house with me on my bed tomorrow. Lucky Can I come and show you? <laughs> Three in a bed on this show. <laughs> now, every Monday when you tune in, you'll be able to see the queen of competitions who's here with me now. She is, of course, Kathy Cantipowich. <laughs> now, why are you the queen of competitions? 
Because I've been winning about 50 or 60 competitions a year for the last 16 years. Yes. So. What kind of things have you won? Oh, holidays, caravans, electrical goods, cameras, rugs, paintings, everything except a car. That's the one thing oh. I haven't won yet. But you're going to pass on how we can all have insider information. Hopefully, right. yes. So what's good this week? Well, this one is absolutely brilliant. It's a brand new Huggy Bear competition. And all you've got to do to enter that is answer some questions on home safety. And all the answers are given in the leaflet, so it's not difficult. The prize is a wonderful family holiday at Euro Disney, a place I really fancy going. But the real secret with these is the tiebreaker slogan. And if you go out and get yourself a copy of a tiebreaker book, right. which Where is do you produced, get those? there's a company called Kelcomp from 54 Uplands Avenue, Connors Key, Deside, Cluid, who sell these every year at £3.50 each. And it's all the previous year's winning slogans are in it. So you can see, because so different, different people like different things. You can go back to last things. year's Huggy Bear competition and see what sort of things have been winning. I'll and tell you, a, you a winning slogan. Mummy teaches me to share. Huggy teaches me to care. Clever, isn't it? Wonderful. Right, so that's that's a good one. A wonderful one, isn't Jolly it? Jolly good. Yes. So I want to win that myself, but I'm too old to enter. Very good. Well, you have to be a certain age. It's That one's a children's competition. Oh, okay. So, how about this one? Put, Bob's not around, is he? No. Win a man. How about that? It win says a win man. a new man. Does that mean a new man? Well, I'm afraid it's not. It's going to keep washing off the things. They're just going to revamp the old one, because oh. it's a week's holiday at a health farm. Gosh, Sounds good, good fun, one. doesn't it? All you've got to do is work out an order of merit. There's seven items given there. Mm. What I would do, it's all about healthy living. So go through a health food book, and it will tell you all the tips for healthy living. Just put them in the right order. And remember and your name again, and address. Write the slogan. Be careful to remember your name and address because a lot of people forget to put that in. And of course they're eliminated from the start. We have to stop you. Oh, I'm what afraid. A shame. It's oh. Oh. Only... And yeah, we want more. We want to know how to win. I want to win I that malt loaf. We'll leave her, we'll leave her, we'll leave her. Today was the day the big breakfast started and also the day that Brian Gould announced his resignation as uh, the Minister for Fun, the Shadow Minister for Fun. Who else should resign? I think the whole of the cast of El Dorado should resign and take up acting maybe. I'm not quite sure. So uh, this has been it. It's time to say goodbye to the girls. Bye girls. Bye, Bye to the boys. Bye boys. Bye. Bye to second Zach. Bye. Joanna Lovely's there. Oh, I know. Oh, Joanna! Joanna! Do the coffee thing! Do it! Do that! Do it! Goodbye, Mark! Goodbye! Goodbye, Mark! Bye! 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 Bye!